Okay, we're done configuring the network address from the front panel keyboard and we've connected to the M650 to our network. Now let's ping the meter just to confirm that the connection is good and the meter actually responds to the computer that I'll be using to finish the setup. I have a command prompt and type meters responding nicely. So I'll launch a browser and have a look at the meter through the web server interface. The web server is a standard feature on all M650s. It can be used as a commissioning tool to confirm the meter is operating properly and it makes configuration faster and simpler. Since the settings page actually resides on the M650, there's no need to install separate configuration software, so there's never any question of compatibility between the version of the firmware on the meter and the version of the software used to configure it. The M650 doesn't care what browser you use to look at the web page. Before we change any settings, this is a good time to look briefly at all the other pages that are available. The web server opens onto a page that identifies which meter you're talking to. It's probably a good idea to make sure that the meter's name is the same as the line that it's monitoring. The data page gives you a real-time look at some basic measurements the meter is making. This can be good feedback to confirm the meter is wired properly. Notice the heartbeat at the bottom of the page. The resets page gives you a place to reset the thermal amp demand as well as other time averaged measurements. The contact page is pretty self-explanatory. Finally, the settings page uses category names that follow the front panel configuration method pretty closely. There are just two exceptions. The identity is not particularly useful from the front panel and the resets is actually a control function, so that has its own page separate from the settings in the web interface. So let's take them one at a time. Identity is where you might indicate the name of the line being monitored by the meter. Inputs is where the meter is configured to operate on a delta or a Y connected system and where the scaling is entered for, to account for the CT and PT ratios. Click on the Submit button after making any changes to save them before navigating to any other page. The network settings were all made in the first part of this demonstration from the front panel, but they can be changed here as well. Most conventional SCADA systems require a serial interface, Here's where the physical port configuration can be done. The M650 supports either Modbus or DNP and will service up to three completely independent sessions. The initial release of the M650 has a fixed point list that mimics the Vitronics popular Multicom platform, a user configurable point list and support for DNP analog events and unsolicited reporting will be available very soon. Probably one of the most convenient features of the M650 is its local display, which includes a bright alphanumeric LED label. The label makes it possible to scroll through a wide variety of measurements. Use this page to select just the measurements that are of interest and to turn off any that aren't. Measurements selected on this page only change the local display. They have no effect on the point list used for SCADA communications. Remember to save any changes before moving to the next page. In addition to saving the settings on each page, it is also necessary to reboot the M650 after all the changes are done to make the settings active. That completes the configuration required to operate the M650 in our example.